Hi everyone! In this tutorial we're going to look at the shapes tool and some of the different shapes you can make. I'll show you how to fill them with color and make a stroke around them, which is the outline. I'll show you again how to copy and paste, and I'll show you how to use the rulers, the guides, and the smart guides. Alright, let's get started. On your toolbar on the side, the shapes tool can be found right here. The default is set to the rectangle. If you click and hold on it, you'll see all of the shapes nested underneath, and you can also click right here and it will tear it off. This makes it easier than having to go through each one every time. First you have your rectangle tool. You have your rounded rectangle tool which will create rounded corners on the rectangle. You have your ellipse tool for creating ovals and circles. You have your polygon tool which lets you create different shapes with a different number of sides. And you have your star tool. We're not going to cover the flare tool because you won't be using that at all in this project. So there are two different ways to create your shape. You can either click, and that's going to give you options here to put in the different sizes. So let's try a 5 by 2 rectangle, and that's going to just create it for you. Another way to make the shape is just to click and drag. This is probably easier because you can actually see what you're making. And like I mentioned in an earlier video, if you hold shift while you do this, it will constrain the sides and make it an even shape on all sides. Let's take a look at some of the other shapes. The rounded rectangle tool lets you create a rectangle with rounded corners. You can also just click and plug in the dimensions you want here, and then you can adjust the corner radius, but I find it easier just to make it. And then you can grab these corner icons here and just drag and adjust the shape of the corners. The shapes also have their own properties you can adjust if you bring up the properties panel. You can adjust the width and height here, and if you click the More Options icon here, it'll bring up some more options. You can adjust the corner size here as well, and if you click this thing, you can adjust corners individually. This links them so you either adjust them all at once, or if you unlink it, you'll do them individually. If you choose the Ellipse tool, we can make a circle or an oval. Again, holding Shift will scale it evenly, and you can scale it freely if you don't hold Shift. Also, if you just click, you'll be able to enter those dimensions in here. And that'll create your ellipse. You also have more properties in the side panel here. If you click more options, you'll be able to adjust the width and the height. With this one here, you can adjust the angle, so that'll rotate it. And you can use this one here to make a pie slice out of your ellipse. And if you click this right here, it'll invert it. You can also grab the handles here and change the shape of it that way. With the polygon tool, if you click, you can choose how many sides you want your shape to have. So if you want to make a triangle, you can make a three-sided shape. And you also have the properties here. If you click more options, you can adjust how many sides you want your polygon to have here. You can also rotate it. This one here lets you adjust the corner radius. So that's rounding out those corners. These let you adjust the size of the polygon, but I prefer just to use my selection tool and grab the corners to scale it up. The star tool lets you create a star. Just click to bring up the properties. You can adjust the radius here and also how many points you want it to have. Click OK and that will create your star for you. And if you come to the more options in your properties panel, you can adjust the shape of it here as well. Alright, let's go ahead, grab our selection tool, select everything, and delete it. All right, let's go over how to color our shapes. If we come down to our shape tool, you'll see in the properties panel that it's set to fill with white and a black stroke at one point. So that means it's gonna create a white shape and it'll have a black outline around it. We're gonna change this from white just so we can see it when we make it. And then when we make our shape, we have it blue with a black stroke that's set to one point. I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see it and we'll just deselect it. To change the color after the fact, we could click on it. We can come to the fill and just change it that way. We can also do that with the stroke. Or we can come down to our fill and stroke icons here. If we double click on the fill, you can adjust the hue with this slider here and then slide around in here to pick the exact color you want. And you could do that with the stroke as well. 
So double click on that to bring up the color picker and we could change the color of the stroke. If you want to get rid of a fill color or a stroke, we can click this little none icon right here and that will just remove it. So make sure you have the stroke selected, click none and that will remove that. We can double click on it again if you want to put the color back. Now that reset it back to a one point stroke. So again, we can come into the side here and just scale that up. If you want to remove the color, you can do the same. Make sure we select our object, come over to the fill, select that, and then hit the none. And that's just going to remove the color completely. For the Illustrator project, we're not going to be using strokes at all, just the fills. And you'll see later why we do that. I know I covered it in the shortcuts tutorial, but I just wanted to go over cutting, copying, and pasting one more time. We'll also look at the rulers, the guides, and the smart guides. All right, if we create a square here, we could come up to the menu and hit edit, cut, and that'll cut it. We could paste it by going back up there and hitting paste, or we can use the shortcut control command on a Mac, X will cut it, and control V will paste it. To copy it, we can come up to edit and hit copy, edit, paste, and that'll paste it. Or we can do control or command C and control V and that'll paste it. Also, if you click on it, hold alt and drag, that's going to create a copy as well. Now, if you wanted to line all of these up without eyeballing it, we could go into our view and go to rulers do show rulers. That's going to show your rulers up on the top and on the sides here. Now if you want to make a guide, you come up to your ruler, click and drag down. And now you see that line we're dragging down. We could set it up as a guide. So we want to line up with that one and we could do it that way. Or we can use our smart guides, which should be on by default, but if they're not on, come down to smart guides or use control U. With that on, what it's going to do is help you line up your objects. So if we click on it, it's showing us where it's lined up with the center, where it's lined up with the sides, and it's just a lot easier for lining up things. If you want to move the guide, just click on it, make sure it's highlighted, and then you can drag it and move it. If you drag it back up to your rulers, it'll disappear. We can also come up to View, Guides, and we can either hide them momentarily or you could clear them all together. And that's going to cover it for this tutorial.